Hi everybody, this is Thomas Lesh with Bonfire Audio. Today I want to talk about how to apply effects to clips without draining your CPU and without taking a long time. This is something I've been doing for quite a while now and I, I haven't seen anybody else really discuss how to apply effects to clips and at the same time take into consideration the fact that you may need to be doing this several times, dozens of times within a long project, say a feature film or a long episodic series. In this case, I'm going to show you an example that I have in a session for a client of mine that is a reality TV show. There's several reasons why you might want to do clip effects that could be applying EQ, and it may not fit a bus or a send where it's sort of a generic setting and you're sending several tracks to it and it sort of is a happy medium. So if you need to apply a cue to fix a dialogue track or a certain level of compression or reverb or denoising any combination of things uh, and you want it to be clip specific, but after doing that a couple dozen times, your CPU is going crazy and your computer might crash. So here's what I've discovered that saves time, saves CPU, and is very effective. So I've got... Uh, two clips here from one segment from a talent. Let's take a listen and see what I what I need to apply. Okay, so we have our GM colors from back in the day, a Nissan in there, Subaru. But right here we have our Corvette orange flame on this, 75 to 76. So the room tone is not horrible coming from the computer, but... Uh, and especially being a reality show, this really wouldn't be that big of a problem. But if this was a cinematic piece for film or a television episode or so forth where this sort of running gun type of production is not as acceptable, then I would want to clean up the audio in the background a little bit and bring, some, bring down the noise floor some. So let's take a, a listen just soloing this. We have our GM colors from back in the day. Click on that. And it's called red. So it's, it's a consistent sound. I've already taken care of the volume and I've got the volume where, where I want it for these two clips. So let's apply a little bit of denoising. There's a couple ways you can do it. As you probably know, you can go in here into the uh, the spectrum analyzer and go ahead and pull things out and denoise and auto heal. But I, I like to use Isotope Denoiser. It's a very effective plugin. So first of all, I don't want to apply it to two separate clips. I want to apply it to one clip. So because I've got the levels where I want, I can go ahead, highlight these two clips, right click and merge. Now I've got one. Now also because once I bake in the clip effect, it will be a destructive form of editing. I want to keep a backup of this in case I need to start over, the client's not happy or I want to change things down the road. So to do that, I'll just copy, paste it down here on another track and I will mute this one. So now I've just got this, but I've got a backup just in case. So I'll go ahead, select the clip now that I want to apply the processing to and the effect. Make sure I'm on clip effects. I'll go ahead and grab my Isotope product here. I'm going to use the RX-5 Denoise. I'll just go ahead and do a generic auto setting uh, because I'm not worried about dialing it in perfectly right now. I just want to use, for example, an effect on this clip. Okay, so we have our GM colors from back in the day, a Nissan in there, Subaru. But right here we have... Even with that auto setting, it is quite a dramatic difference. Here's without it. Okay, so we have our... Okay, so we have... Excellent. I'll go ahead and just take a listen with the music in the background. Okay, so we have our GM colors from back in the day, a Nissan in there, Subaru. I love it. So now at this point, if I want to go ahead and apply this effect, um, it, it, well, it's already applied, but if I wanted to bake it in and not just leave it as is, because again, remember, if I did this 10, 20, 30 times throughout the course of my 48 minute session here, my CPU would go crazy. So I want to bake this in. I've got a backup and I don't want to do the typical right click, bounce to new track, selected clips only, because every time I do that, I get a new track. And then I have to grab that clip bring it back to this track and delete that new track that was created. Or I end up with a just a messy session and too many empty tracks. So I don't need to do that. So all you really have to do is take your razor tool, snip that, that clip somewhere, anywhere, highlight those two, and it's as simple as merging them once again. I now have this new clip with the effect baked in. You can see it removed the effect and I've got my backup, so let's take a listen. Okay, so we have our GM colors from back in the day, a Nissan in there, Subaru. 
But right here we have our Corvette orange flame on this. Exactly what I wanted. And that's what I wanted to show you guys. This works with reverb, EQ, compression. Like I said, any kind of effects and plugins that you want to apply per clip that just doesn't happen to make sense to do it on the entire track or it doesn't make sense for a, uh, a send and, and routing it you know, to an auxiliary track and it's just really clip specific. You can do this as many times as you want. Just keep a backup of that file by copying, pasting it to another track and, uh, and having that there in case you need it. But now I'm not draining any CPU. This is baked in. I've applied my effects. It's very simple and fast. Once you get used to doing this, it really takes no time at all. It makes a whole lot of sense to, uh, to work this way. So I hope my little secret tip, I guess you could say, works for you guys. I hope it's helped. Uh, it's not a secret anymore. So again, this is Thomas with Bonfire Audio. I hope it's helped and uh, have a blessed day.